All right, today I'm going to talk to you about moving your applications over to an external drive on a Mac. Now, I don't know if you can do this with Intel-based Macs, but I know you can do it with Apple Silicon-based Macs, whether that's the M1 up through the most recent M4. And so that really gives you the ability to save on some hard drive space because Apple's going to rip you off on upgrading their hard drive space. So let's talk about that just for a second. There are going to be some of you guys that are going to chime in and say between the 256 gigabyte, the 512, and then bumping on up, that there's a difference in read-write speeds. There's an advantage to upgrading to Apple's newer, or should I say larger capacity SSDs, that you'll get better read-write speeds. And technically, that's probably accurate. That said, overwhelmingly, in my opinion, I'm speaking about those using it in a recording studio at home. That's really what I'm talking about today. Doesn't apply to everybody. However, what I'm going to show you today applies to all Mac users, okay? So... The odds of you needing that additional read-write speed or benefiting from it is about zero. I didn't say 0 0.01, I said zero. You're simply not going to benefit from the differences in that speed. Now, that said, if you're shooting 8K RAW video or you're editing 8K RAW video and things like that, then sure, but most of you probably don't even know what I'm talking about when I say RAW. So if you do heavy video editing or things along that line, yes, there will be some benefits to that. But for your digital audio workstation, quite frankly, um, your virtual instruments and things like that, you're simply not going to benefit from the subtle differences in those. Nor are you going to lose anything by running these applications as well as your other files off an external drive. You're really not. You can get some very fast external drives today. I happen to have quite a few of them here in the studio. This one here, it's connected, so I can't show it to you. But this has, uh, I think, NVMe or what, you know what I'm talking about, um, the SSD into this. And you can, you can change it out whenever you want. This is a Thunderbolt enclosure. They make USB-C, depending on what you're using. But regardless of that, um, it's incredibly fast. Is it as fast as the internal hard drive on my M1 MacBook Pro? No, it's not even close. Does it really make a difference? No. I've edited video directly on my M1 MacBook Pro. And I'm edited off of this, and I can't tell any difference in the rendering speed or any of that stuff. It really is quite subtle. Now, I shoot my videos in 4K, so I do benefit from a faster read-write speed. But you get to a point to where it's just not that significant for most people. This is one guy's opinion. Some of you are going to argue because that's all you know how to do. But regardless, that is the way it is from my experience. Okay, this process is really quite simple. The easiest way to do this is to start it when you first buy your Mac. Now let's talk for a second, Apple ripping everybody off and its long history of charging insane amounts of money for just upgrading to a larger capacity SSD. That is a complete ripoff for the vast majority of the people, so this is a good workaround for that. You can start with the entry level. Now when I say entry level, I'm really kind of saying for the studio world, kind of start with a 512 gigabyte. The 256 may get you there for a while, but as you grow, you may find that you want a little bit more than that. So kind of keep that in mind. Stop the video real quick and take a quick break and talk about a couple of things for housekeeping for this channel. I make these enclosures along with Artisan Woodshed for the SoftTube Console 1 series, the MK3 Console 1, as well as the MK3 Fader. I've got them here with individual units. If you just have one, then you can do that, or you can put them side by side. I have various types of wood species that you can choose from, depending on what kind of color you want. Really kind of adds a bling to your studio. I also have enclosures where you can mount the fader at a perfect angle, as well as the console one at a perfect angle, where it makes everything visible and easy to use and within reach. So choose whatever one you want. You can go to www.artisanwoodshed.com and you can purchase from there, and you can see the gallery and everything else like that. You can also purchase from my Reverb store if you choose to go that route. Now, I also am part of the affiliate program with Sweetwater, so there's an affiliate link down below if you choose to buy anything, whether it be a $20 mic cable or a $20,000 console. It doesn't really matter. I get a small cut of that. I also have the same relationship with Tom, and if you're over in Europe, I would appreciate it if you'd use either one of those links if you're choosing to buy from either one of those stores is it helps me grow and it helps keep 
others' opinions out of my opinion. If there's anything you're always going to be able to count on this channel, I'm always going to say it like it is, whether a manufacturer likes it or not. You're going to get an honest opinion from me, always, always, always. Now let's get back and talk about moving your applications over to the external. How do you go about doing this? Well, it's best if you do this right when you buy the Mac. It really doesn't make a difference. It's just easier when you buy the Mac to do it. However, you can do it later on, really no problem. Now, Apple has its core applications that you cannot delete, you cannot move, so understand that. All your other application files you can move. So let's say, for example, you've got shortcuts to launch the app down in your toolbar below. What you may find is once you move that, that turns into a question mark. Don't fear you haven't done anything wrong, and I'll explain why in just a second. I strongly suggest that you reformat your new external drive that you're going to move these applications over to, and then create appropriate folders, so obviously one named Applications. Now, I also recommend that you store your virtual instruments, all of those things on this external drive as well, as well as some plugin manufacturers give you the ability to choose where their plugins are located and you can install them directly to that external drive. Most plugins do not take up a lot of hard drive space, so you're not going to benefit very much from that. An exception with that would be Acoustica Audio. Their plugins can be quite large and you will benefit from moving those over to an external drive. Really, all you have to do is once you create that folder on your external drive, you have that drive connected to your computer, then you're basically going to highlight all the apps within the application folder, and you're going to copy those over to that external drive. Now, it will copy all of the Apple default applications that Apple requires always remain on your operating system. So don't worry about that. I'll talk about more about that in just a second. Now, once you've got those copied over, then you can go back to your main application drive. That's the one on your hard drive of your Mac. Now, before I talk about this, I should have said this before, always make sure you back up your Mac on a regular basis. All of your files should be backed up. In the event something goes wrong, you can quickly restore it. So kind of keep that in mind. I don't foresee anything going wrong here. I've done it many times. It's a non-issue for me. However, you want to be able to be safe when you do it and have that peace of mind knowing if you mess something up, you can get it back. Now, I could have a long discussion about backups. This video is not about that. Ultimately, I have three levels of backups always redundant within my system. So once you've got all those files moved over to your applications folder on your external drive, go back to your hard drive of your Mac. Then start deleting one by one all of the applications that you have installed on that Mac. And you do that by holding down your command button and delete, and then follow the prompts to delete that from your application folder. Now, if you do it to an application and it doesn't do anything, more than likely that's one of the default Apple apps. What you're trying to get to is delete all of the apps on your Mac hard drive, all of them, with the exception of leaving the remaining ones that Apple requires. That's the only thing you really need to keep on your Mac. Now, once you've done that, go back to your external drive. Now, you can do this or not do this. It doesn't really matter, but it's better to be cleaner. Go back to your external drive where you have your applications folders and then pull up another finder window and then go one by one and delete from your external drive all of the apps that are required to remain on the Mac itself. Safari being a perfect example, Apple Music being a perfect example, Utilities folder being a perfect example. All those things are required to remain on your Mac. So just get rid of those off of your external drive. There's no need for it. Now, again, let's say, for example, you use Cubase or Studio One or God forbid Pro Tools. I'm sorry for you, but God forbid Pro Tools. And you have a shortcut down in your toolbar below. You'll notice you get that question mark. Don't worry about it. Just drag that question mark off and it will delete it and go poof and go away, and you'll get rid of all of those on your shortcut. Why did it do that? Because it's no longer in your applications folder. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Now what you can do is go to your external drive and then create a shortcut on your toolbar from there, and bam, bada bing, bada boom, it will be back there again, and then you can just launch the application from there. On my external drive, I store the plugins that will allow me to store to an external drive. Again, you may decide that's necessary or not necessary, 
because historically they don't tend to take up a ton of space. However, that's your choice to do it. There are some plug-in manufacturers that require you to keep them installed on the internal drive of the computer. That's fine. FabFilter is a perfect example of that. So leave it there. Don't worry about it. They don't take up a ton of space. It's just a non-issue. For most of us, where a lot of the space gets taken up is really in virtual instruments and all the files associated with those. That tends to take up a lot of hard drive space. If you use Superior Drummer, that's going to take up a lot of hard drive space. You can put all that information on that external drive, as well as you can create a folder on that external drive where you store all of your internal files and you work from that external drive. So no need to really save those internally on your Mac. You can do that if you choose to, and some of you may want to do that if you're using like a laptop or something else. And if you were to forget your external drive, you'd run into some complications. So kind of keep that in mind. So this process really is as simple as that. Later on down the road, say for example, uh, SSDs are always coming down in price, speeds are always increasing, and closures are being more capable, faster speed. So you can always upgrade that at a later date. You can upgrade your enclosure, buy yourself a new uh, SSD drive, and then you can just copy everything over from one to the next and run at a faster speed if that interests you, or start storing things on a larger capacity. Today, four terabyte hard drives are relatively economical in the big scheme of things, so you may want to choose something like that. It will grow with you as your needs grow. Remember, backup, backup, backup. You always want to back up your internal Mac, and you always want to back up this external drive. These things are both very, very important. See them as one unit, not two. One unit, not two. So be disciplined about that whole process and make sure and ensure that all of your files are indeed backed up to another external drive. Well, thank you for watching this. Hopefully I've answered all your questions and made this quite easy for you to understand so you can do this on your Mac at home again. I don't know if this works with Intel-based Macs, but I certainly know it works so far with the Apple Silicon Macs that I've done it with. So if you have any questions, put them down below. If you have any comments, put them down below. But until next time, hope all of you have a great day. Bye-bye.